Big Misunderstanding About Salvation and Jesus by Truth Empowered Life. We believe the truth will set you free just as the Bible says. Some believers are struggling to understand salvation. They feel confused because it feels to them like some scriptures are contradicting salvation by grace. If you understand the Bible correctly, it will improve your faith and also your relationship with God. We are going to explain these so-called problem verses in this video to help you understand the Word of God and to eliminate any confusion and also to empower you to help anyone else that may be struggling with these same misunderstandings. Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 9 says, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and that is not from yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boost. Salvation is a gift from God, not a reward from God. You cannot earn your salvation and no good works can help you get salvation. By reading the New Testament in context you will realize many verses explain it very clearly that you are saved by your faith in Jesus and nothing else. Your deeds are not what determine whether you receive eternal life. Now before you jump up and claim that I'm a false prophet because I'm saying you can do as much sin as you want and still go to heaven, sit down because that's not what I'm saying. By understanding the truth you will also find peace. Some people struggle with some of the scriptures that they believe say grace is not alone is not enough. And we are going to have a look at these scriptures to understand what is the real truth about salvation. Now let's have a look at some of these scriptures that causes confusion. Matthew 7 verse 21 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Galatians 5 verse 21 says, Envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. There are also other verses stating by doing certain things you will not be able to enter the kingdom of heaven. If you have a look at the Sermon of the Mount preached by Jesus, he teaches about the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God and it can be found in Matthews 5 to 7. This is the whole chapter 5 and the whole, up to chapter 7. By reading these chapters, some may feel that we have to earn salvation and please God and that grace might not be enough. What is the truth then? The Kingdom of God. You will notice that all these verses and teachings are referring to the Kingdom of Heaven or the Kingdom of God. So it becomes evident that we need to understand the Kingdom of Heaven or the Kingdom of God. These two terms are used interchangeably with each other. The best way to understand something in the Bible is to let the Bible explain itself. So we need to see what the Bible teaches about the Kingdom of God. In Luke 11 verse 20 it says, But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. A little bit later on in Luke 17 verse 20 to 21 it says, Being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them, The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed. Nor will they say, Look, here it is, or there, for behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. Romans 14 verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Notice that Jesus described the kingdom of God not as eternal life, but something that is present on earth. Jesus brought the kingdom of God to earth. The Holy Spirit in us empower us to live out the kingdom of God on earth. The kingdom of heaven by looking at the Sermon of the Mount is a way of living, an inward change in our hearts that is lived out by us through the power of the Holy Spirit. That is why Jesus taught us in Matthew 6 verse 10, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is the, the, the prayer that, that he taught us how to pray. We are not asking in this prayer for the end of the earth to come, but God's will to be done. The kingdom of God is his will that, that we must build and expand on earth. 
You enter the kingdom of God by firstly believing in Jesus Christ as your Savior and confessing it with your mouth. Mouth, Because Jesus saved you, you have eternal life. But you also have fellowship with Him through the Holy Spirit that comes into your heart while you are on earth. The Holy Spirit then changes your heart completely. He transforms you into a new person. This change cannot be stopped. It is something that will occur. You cannot and will not remain the same if you truly believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior and if you let the Holy Spirit fill you. If no change took place after believing in Jesus and letting the Holy Spirit come into your life, your faith wasn't real. And that brings us to the next verse some believers struggle with. Now let's go and have a look at at another piece of scripture that some people struggle with. And this is James 2 verse 14 to 26. People quote verse 24 that reads, You see that a person is considered righteous, but what they do, and not by faith alone. And verses 26 that people also quote is, As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. The problem is, these are quoted out of context, without understanding what is being so said. So in order to understand this correctly, we need to read together. We're going to be reading James 2 verse 14 to 26. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it's not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off into a different direction? As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Now this scripture, what James is referring to here is that if you are saved and have real faith in Jesus Christ, you will also have a real change and that, you will, that it will result in good deeds. And if no good deeds come from you, it's because no change took place. The reason for the change not occurring is because faith was never real. I'm saying it again. If you really have faith in Jesus as your Savior, you will have fellowship with Him through the Holy Spirit. And you will be changed by the Spirit. You cannot prevent that change. If you have true faith in Jesus, also note that the change is not by you, but by the Spirit. The old you died and you are now a new person through the power of the Spirit. I want us to look now at John 14 verse 2 to 6. It's Jesus speaking and he says, In my father, Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. When Jesus referred to heaven, he said, I am going to the Father. He didn't say, I'm going to the kingdom of God. Heaven is where the Father is, and that is where we will be spending eternal life, with the Father. It is clear that the only way to the Father is through Jesus and nothing else. You cannot receive eternal life or go to the Father by anything else that your faith, but your faith in Jesus Christ. Now some people say the moment they hear someone preaching grace, so this means that I can do whatever I want and still go to heaven. Grace doesn't mean that. 
Grace means that your faith in Jesus will activate the power of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit will change you. You will no longer want to sin. Your heart will be changed so that you no longer favor sin. You will not think I can now go and sin and still go to heaven because the Spirit changed you from the inside. It took you in the past and it was something that you had to do. But the Spirit sets you free. And sinning is nothing that you want to do. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are you from sin because your heart doesn't favor sin anymore. It doesn't mean that you will never sin again. It means you will no longer find joy in sin. You will now find joy in life and in Jesus. Some people also, out of thankfulness for your salvation, you no longer want to sin. You cannot repay God by not sinning or rewarding Him for your salvation. It's not thankfulness that keeps you away from sinning. Only the power of the Holy Spirit can keep sin at bay by changing your entire attitude towards sin. The change of heart is by the power of the Holy Spirit and not by your own doing. We can still make choices, but with a heart that no longer favors sin, good deeds will follow automatically. That is why faith without deeds is dead, and faith as explained in the book of James. And that is also the way and the recipe how we build the kingdom of God. Remember, your good works does not affect your salvation in any way. God cannot condemn you or be angry with you. Your past, current and future sin already forgiven and punished on the cross when Jesus took it upon himself. You are saved and guaranteed eternal life by your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior. You are free and don't have to fear the day your body, your body dies on earth. Your body can die, but your spirit cannot thanks to Jesus that gave you eternal life. You do not have to do anything else except have faith in Jesus as your Savior. That is why it is called the good news. Good works is just the result of the Holy Spirit's power in your life after you got saved and it will follow automatically after being saved and by receiving the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before you go, there is something very important. Truth Empowered Life needs your help. We are an internet ministry that reach out to people to change their lives with the truth. We aim to empower people to live a powerful life by teaching them to understand the Word of God. To help us, please follow our page on Facebook and also share our regular posts to reach more people with the Word of God. We would also like to ask you to make a donation to help us reach more people. For every one dollar we receive, we can reach up to 300 new people with the amazing word of God and help them to understand it. No matter where you are in the world, you can safely and securely make a donation in any currency and from any country and support us to help others with our messages. Well, just like this message helped you, it can help someone else. Even the smallest amount can make a difference in his life and we would like to thank you for your support. To donate, you can go to our Facebook page by visiting www.facebook.com forward slash Truth Empowered Life or you can use the search bar on Facebook to find us, Truth Empowered Life. Once you're on our website, you, uh, once you're on our Facebook page, you can click on the Donate tab and then make a donation. It's safe and secure, it's done through PayPal and it can be made in any currency and from anywhere in the world. We thank you for your support, we know God will bless you and I know that this message changed your life. Amen.